We're here in the dicastery for the promotion of Christian unity and with me is His Eminence, Cardinal Kurt Koch, who has been leading the initiatives of the Vatican to promote Christian unity amongst all Christian churches. Your Eminence, we're at war in Europe right now. How is this affecting Christian unity? I think we have, with this war in Ukraine, a very difficult situation because um, Christians kill Christians and above all Orthodox kill Orthodox. And this is a very bad and sad message uh, for the world because Christians have the duty and the responsibility to be um, engaged uh, for the peace then the religion cannot be part of the problem of war, but must be part of reconciliation and peace. We are preparing already for a synod um, here in Rome to be held in October on, well, it's a synod of synodality. What role will other Christian churches also play in this process, if any? I can say twice. First of all, just last year, the General Secretary of the Bishop's Synod, Cardinal Gregg, and I have written a letter to all the Bishops' Conferences that we invite all the other churches to be present in this dialogue, in this uh, synodality, because we can learn something about other churches. The different churches have different ways of synodality, and we can learn many things. And on the other side, here in the Angelicum at the university, we have some symposiums about synodality. In the last November and December, we have had some symposiums with the title Listening to the East, from the Oriental, Oriental Orthodox Churches, the Assyrian Church, how they have the vision and the practice of synodality. And the, in the next week, on the end, we begin with the practice and the meaning of synodality in the, in the Occidental, in the West churches. And this is a very beautiful sign to learn more and to deepen the synodality in the Catholic Church. Today is also the beginning of the week of prayer for unity amongst Christians. What would you say um, is, is what, what is the main message also of the Church uh, for this unity? The introduction of the week of prayer stands on the beginning of the ecumenical movement. And this is a very beautiful sign. That means that we humankind cannot find unity. We can make problems and divisions as we see in the history, but also in the present. Unity is always a gift of the Holy Spirit. And the best method for receiving this gift is, is, is the prayer. The fundament of all ecumenical engagement is the high priestly prayer from Jesus in the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John. And it's very interesting that Jesus does not order unity by his disciples, but he prays for the unity. And when Jesus has prayed for the unity, we cannot do some better. Speaking of unity, it's also, of course, uh, on, the, on the level of, of theology, there, there are also differences. How do you find a good balance between unity and, let's call it, diversity? Just in the Catholic Church, we have a relation between unity and diversity because the, the Catholic Church has the relation be between the local churches many local churches in the world and the unity of the universal church in this sense unity and diversity uh, multiplicity are not against one another but help one another and in this sense also in the ecumenical engagement we have we search unity but that means not that we have uniatism but we, we respect and acknowledge 
the different diversities in the other churches when there are not separating issues but reconciled issues, the differences that are reconciled. This is the very important question that we must find. Very soon, if we look to Africa, very soon the Holy Father will travel to, to Congo and to South Sudan. Could you tell us a little bit there also about the conflict uh, going on there? Um, we, we understand there are also um, Christians in South Sudan, for example, has been a long civil war, um, Christians fighting against Christians. Yes, this is a very difficult situation. We have uh, many uh, civil wars in, in this region, in Congo, also in South Sudan. But we have a common work for reconciliation between the Catholic Church and the Anglican World Communion and the Presbyterian Church in, in England. And in this sense, this vis apostolic visit of the Holy Father in South Sudan will be a common pilgrimage between the Archbishop of Canterbury, Welby, and the President of the Presbyterian Church in England and, and the Pope. Because all these churches are engaged to refine reconciliation in this country, and this is, a, I sense, a very beautiful sign that all the churches collaborate uh, together for refining peace in this very difficult situation. Is the situation similar here in Europe as it is in Africa, especially if we think of those three churches? No, it belongs because these churches are present in, in this region and have collaborated uh, together just in the past. And there, uh, the presidents are here in Rome for a visit by the Pope, and also the president of the Presbyterian and the Archbishop of Canterbury were present here. And now we, they have decided in this time to go to uh, South Sudan. It was planned last year in June, but uh, with the problems of the knee, from the Holy Father, this was post, postponed uh, on the end of January. What would you say, um, what is the status right now of the unity of Christian churches also, uh, maybe with regard also to the Orthodox churches and, and the Catholic Church? Have the relations improved? Has it become more difficult? They have become more difficult because we have many tensions and divisions in the Orthodox world. And we, in the dialogue with the, between the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church, we want to refine unity. And now we have many, many tensions and divisions in the Orthodox world, and this is a difficulty. For instance, we have an international mixed commission between the Catholic Church and all the Orthodox churches, but the Russian Orthodox Church doesn't participate in this dialogue after the declaration of the autocephaly in, of the Orthodox Church in the Ukraine two years before uh, the war. And when the Russian Orthodox Church doesn't participate in this dialogue, this is a challenge. Is there any chance of uh, the Holy Father meeting the, the Russian Orthodox Patriarch anytime soon? It was planned in the June uh, to have this visit in Jerusalem, but it was very difficult because uh, when there are very, very different visions about the war, we must uh, keep the door for have dialogue, but I cannot say something if we have a further uh, meeting between the two heads of the churches. So the situation has also not become easier uh, no, in, over the no, past in, months. In every case. Yeah. What would you personally, what will you personally pray for in this week of prayer for Christian unity? First of all, that we can refine peace between uh, the Christians uh, in the Ukraine and in many, many different countries. I think we have this very beautiful light motif for this week. Um, is taken by the prophet Isaiah, uh, too good 
and seek justice. And a beautiful fruit of justice is peace. Opus Justitia Pax. It was the leitmotiv of the pontificate of Pius XII and come from uh, the prophet Isaiah. And when we cannot refine a better justice between the human kinds, we cannot have peace. And in this sense, it's very important to deepen all these realities. Your Eminence, thank you very much also for your time and for sharing with us also these informations and thoughts. Thank you, and I hope that all to speak, want to pray for the unity is an engagement for every people.